Hey guys, this is Shayan and today I'm gonna solve a harder problem on DP rerouting. So, let's get started. The problem that we're gonna solve is word iter brothers 238C. This problem is very similar to the previous problem that we solved, choosing capital for three lines. If you haven't watched that yet, make sure to watch that one first because that's gonna help you to understand this one. We have a directed tree and this time we want to choose two capitals in a way that for all the other vertices, there will be a path from at least one of these two capitals to this vertex. So the only difference that this problem has compared to choosing capital for three land is that this time we want to choose two capitals and still we want to flip the minimum number of edges. We want to choose the two capitals in a way that this value will be minimized. In the problem choosing capital for three land, we solve it for one vertex. And in that problem, n was up to 10 to the fifth. This time n is up to 3000. So first, we know that how to solve this problem for one capital. As we said, we can use our DP that we calculate using DP rerouting idea. So first, we solve the problem for only one capital. For each vertex, we keep that what is the answer if only this vertex is the capital. And then we say that assume we have two vertices S and T as our capital in our tree between S and T. That S has a directed path to that and the suffix, and they might overlap, it's okay. That T has a directed path to them. Why? Because it's not possible that we have a vertex that T has a path to, but later on we have another vertex that S has a path to. Because it means that if T has a path to this vertex, it means that all these edges should be leftwards. But if S has a path to these ones, it means that all these edges should be right so we are sure that if at some point s does not have a path to the vertices then after that s can never have a path to them so if this is the first vertex that s do not have a path to then the later ones also s do not have a path to them and the same goes for t in the other direction so this is how it goes and we can say that the overlap of these two is exactly one vertex because we know that all these edges are leftwards and all these edges are rightwards so there will be exactly one vertex in the middle that both of them can reach but the the other vertices in this path will be reached by only one of the vertices. Let's call this middle vertex, vertex C. And about the other edges, it is obvious that they should all be downwards if we put this path on top. When most of people approach this problem, they start to think that they should fix one of those two capitals and try to find that for this capital, what is the best other vertex that can be the other capital? If S is one of our capitals, then what is the best T that can be our second capital? People mostly think a lot on this approach until they realize that this won't work well. Here, we have a better idea. What if we fix this vertex C? I mean, instead of deciding that what is S and what is T, let's decide what is C. So first we have a four on all the vertices and fix our C. And then we say that we have to choose two S and T in a way that if we root our tree at vertex C, all the edges in the path from S to C should be upwards. All the edges from T to C should be upwards as well. And all the other edges should be downwards. So this is how the tree will look like. So if we solve the problem for one capital and assume that we solve it for C. So we have DP of C. We know that what is the answer if C is our only capital and all the edges are downwards. Even if you don't want to use rerouting in here because n is up to 3000, you can also have a squared solution for this first and just have a DFS from C and find out how many edges are upwards. This would also work. But anyways, we have some C and for this fixed C, we want to find the best S and T such that we already know what the answer is. We know this DP of C. But by choosing S and T, what will change? Well, all the edges in this path would change. Previously, they had to be downwards. So if any of them was not downwards, we had to make it downwards. But now they should all be upwards. So this time, if any of them is downwards, we should make that upwards. The same goes for vertex T. In here, again, all the edges had to be downwards. But, but now they have to be upward. So we have to see that which vertices of S and T are the best possible vertices such that they are in different subtrees. And second, if we make all the edges from S to C and T to C upwards instead of downwards, it has the most benefit for us. If making all these edges downward would cost us like V1 and making all of them upwards will cost us V2, we will calculate the value
value of v1 minus v2. Why? Because v1 are the number of edges that we had to change them, but we don't have to do that anymore. And v2 is the number of edges that we didn't have to change, but now we have to change them. So this is going to be our benefit, this value of v1 minus v2. So we want to find out two vertices with maximum benefits. And how can we calculate that benefit? Simply using a DP. Now, instead of only finding this value for C, I will find it for each vertex V. So for each vertex V, I consider its subtree, considering that C is still the root of my tree. And I will have two values, MX1 of V and MX2 of V. Which are the two best vertices for V if my tree was only the subtree of vertex V and V was the root of my tree. So MX1 and MX2 give me the best benefits in two different subtrees of V. And I can initially set them equal to zero because we can say that both of our capitals are vertex V. It is okay that the two capitals are the same. So initially they are zero, but I try to find these values. And in order to find these values, if V has a child like U, U has some MX1 and some MX2 for two of its children. Well, first of all, I see that MX2 of U is not useful for me because I only can take one vertex from the subtree of U and I don't need the second one. If I'm gonna take one, I will take the maximum, the best one, instead of the second best. So I only care about MX1, and I should also consider the direction of this edge. If this direction is upward, I should add one to MX1 of U, because my benefit will be increased by one. Now there is one more edge that I would benefit from if I make all of these upward instead of downwards. But if the direction of this edge is downwards, then it's going to be mx1 of u minus 1. So I have a value and I just need to say that my mx2 of v is max equal to val and this max equal to is not a real operator in C++. I'm just using it for explanation. It means that mx2 of v is equal to maximum of mx2 of v and val. And if mx2 of v was greater than mx1 of v, then I can simply swap these two because mx1 is my first maximum and mx2 is my second maximum. So if a number added and it is now greater than mx1, we should swap these two values. And simply I can calculate mx1 and mx2 for some vertex v. And then finally, our final answer for this fixed c is going to be dp1 of c minus mx1 of c which is the benefit that i get from choosing the first capital minus mx2 of c which is the benefit that i am going to take if i consider these two capitals let's get into implementation and we have int of n seen n for int i i get all the edges and make my tree but i should again define it as pii but in here, zero means that the direction is correct. From u to v, this one means that the direction is incorrect. It is not from v to u. Now let's calculate our dps. As I said, because n is up to 3000, we can also do it without using rerouting. But we prefer to implement rerouting in order to train that again. So I will start with dfs1 from vertex zero, in which I will calculate dp of vertex zero, my root. I have four on the edges dfs1 of u and v dp of 0 plus equal to w if the direction was not correct it was upward but we're going downwards now i have dp of vertex 0 we have to find dp of all the vertices i use dfs2 for that almost the same structure i have a 4 and in here i have to say that dp of u is equal to dp of v plus if w was 1 it means that this edge is upwards so it's better for you if we choose u as our root because u does not need to change the direction so i should subtract one from dp otherwise if u was 0 it means that it is downwards so it was better for v compared to you so i should add one. So this way i can calculate all the dps now let's fix our vertex c i know that my final answer obviously is less than n because we have n minus one edges so we can initial set as equal to n and each time we can say that as equal to minimum of n's and dp of c minus mx1 of c minus mx2 of c. as you said here in tablets now we should find mx1 and mx2 so we should have a dfs3 of c and in this dfs i just simply find mx1 and mx2 
Again, we have almost the same structure. We also define the values of MX1 and MX2. Let's get back to our pseudocode that we had in here. As I said, I first need to calculate this value. And then I say that my MX2 of V is max equal to val. And then swap MX1 and MX2 if needed. So in here, after I calculated the values of MX1 and MX2 for vertex U, I can update my values for MX1 and MX2 of V. If W was 1, it means that this edge is upward, so whatever my benefit was, I should add one to it. Otherwise, it means that whatever my benefit was, now it is subtracted by one because this edge is downwards, and it was better if we had planned to make it downwards. And we should obviously add mx1 of vertex c, and then we can say that mx2 of v is equal to maximum of mx2 of v and val. And if mx2 of v became greater than mx1 of v, it means that the order is not correct and we should swap mx1 of v and mx2 of v. So this is how we can calculate our answer and we should finally see out our answer. Okay, let's run it first. It runs. Okay, let's keep the first case to this. It. it is correct. And the second test case, minus two sucks. We forgot to set MX1 and MX2 equal to zero at the beginning. This might be the issue. So let me check again. Oh God, I forgot to change these numbers for DFSs. I hope it's resolved. Now. Yeah, it is resolved now. How did it give correct answer at first? 27, sounds promising. Seven. See you in the next video. Shaya. Ah, 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 ah.